Hello, my name is Alex Misono, and I'm an interventional radiologist practicing at Hogue Hospital in Newport Beach in Irvine, California. In the next few minutes, I'd like to share with you a case example of the TriNav infusion catheter and its profound impact on one of my many patients with hepatocellular carcinoma. For your awareness, please note that I'm a consultant with Trisalis with whom I co-developed this presentation. This is my agenda. Let's briefly cover a few basics about TriNav and then move on to the case presentation. So what's TriNav? It's an innovative microcatheter for the delivery of transarterial therapy, such as those used in Y90 radiolization. In my experience, TriNav is very trackable. It's easily visible and it's atraumatic. Uh, and in simple terms, it can create a dynamic one-way valve in a target artery, thus promoting excellent anti-grade flow. Furthermore, the technology effectively pressurizes downstream delivery of embolic into distal vasculature, while also simultaneously avoiding reflux. The catheter can be used interchangeably with basically all typical microcatheters that you might use for Y90 or taste therapy. It comes in both 120 and 150 centimeter lengths. Uh, in my practice, I tend to use a 120 centimeter length while doing mapping with Trinet. And then if I'm gonna use it for treatment, I might use the 150 centimeter length for extra catheter length uh, while delivering particularly agents such as Y90. When using TriNav, it's pretty simple. It acts like almost any other microcatheter. Just remember that the one-way microvalve, which is really the magic of the device, the smart valve, is located between the two easily visible marker bands. You can see them here on the actual image of the product itself and then also radiographically, it's quite evident as well. So let's move on to the case presentation. In this presentation, I want to discuss the clinical case of a seven-year-old male with a history of hepatitis C cirrhosis, which was complicated by HCC. My patient had been previously treated at a partner care center on the other side of town. Um, and by the time he was referred to me, he had been diagnosed with multicentric, multilobar HCC and he was status post prior taste and Y90 from an IR perspective. He had excellent ECOG status, but was progressing on yet another line of systemic therapy. On clinical evaluation, he actually appeared overall pretty healthy on physical exam, and he maintained relatively normal laboratory studies despite his disease. His transaminases and his AFB were mildly elevated, but his synthetic liver enzymes and liver studies were well, well maintained. So his medical oncologist did perform an EOVIST uh, liver MRI, which triggered that referral to my clinic for local regional therapy. On reviewing the MRI, it became quite clear that there's a multiplicity of clustered lesions involving both hepatic lobes, several of which I've indicated here with red arrows um, on both the late arterial phase as well as the hepatobiliary phase. And as you can say, uh, or as you can see here, all of these lesions demonstrated both arterial enhancement they also had portal venous washout with this persistent typo intensity on the hepatobiliary phase. So these are all, unfortunately, HCCs. I just dis discussed this case with the patient's medical oncologist. Uh, we knew that the multiplicity as well as the multicentric nature of the disease was clearly rather problematic, as well as his history of prior treatment. He had already been evaluated for transplant at the quaternary care center, and he was deemed to be outside of transplant criteria simply based on the size and the number of his lesion. He had also tried systemic therapy already um, and with progression of disease on all agents. And then surgical resection or percutaneous ablation, even taste had been considered, but realistically, these were not good options given again, the number and distribution of lesions. Therefore, we felt that Y90 was basically the only good option left for our patient. I brought the patient in for a pre-Y90 mapping angiogram. I knew that this was gonna be hard. I started off studying the right hepatic artery here. I isolated a segment, six, seven branch looks like, which fed three separate kind of disparate, discrete hypervascular masses, all of which were consistent with HCC and correlated with the imaging that I already had. During this procedure, I found that distal catheter axis around that hairpin turn that you can see right here and here on the still image, I found that distal catheter axis is rather difficult because of that tortuosity. I was also concerned actually from the cone beam CT that this inferior branch might actually have just a little bit of collateral flow to the actual masses as well. And therefore for this right 
hepatic artery treatment, I realized that I needed to do a relatively proximal catheter position here, such as that demonstrated on this slide. Upon further mapping, I found that segment four fed mostly tumor, as shown on this first row of images here. And then furthermore, that the takeoff of the left hepatic artery was rather short, and also that the left hepatic artery did appear to collateralize the segment four, as well as feed known tumor in the left hepatic lobe proper as well. So after any mapping, I always take a step back and that's what I did here as well. Um, uh, but more so than most mappings, I had several concerns. Quite clearly, there's uh, numerous lesions here with disparate vascular territories. This presents a technical challenge as well as raises this idea of a trade-off between delivering a safe radiation load versus adequately treating your tumor. I also harbored some concerns about the fact that this gentleman's liver had been previously treated uh, so I could overtreat while attempting to be a hero and risk REILD. And practically speaking, that left hepatic artery uh, takeoff that's rather short, I was concerned about what the implications were for catheter stability for delivery. So therefore, there was quite a bit to think about as an operator, uh, but I realized at that time that TriNav could really assist me quite significantly um, in treating my patient. So now we move on to the treatment. So I started off by treating his right hepatic lobe disease. You will actually recognize now the trinav catheter here with his proximal and distal markers here on this angiogram. Um, the catheter is in a pretty similar position as it was uh, to that seen on the mapping angiogram that I just showed you. With the catheter in place, even a gentle injection here creates a very intense contrast blush within tumor. And so I was pretty comfortable uh, about getting preferential flow towards the tumor. And actually I noticed that there was decreased perfusion to the normal hepatic parenchyma, as you can see, as there is decreased intensity or decreased contrast load within the inferior going branches. So this angiogram is really a testament to the ability of the trinaph to influence what I call the liver angiosome and the hemodynamics of the liver angiosome. Satisfied with this angiogram, I proceeded with line IV delivery. Briefly, I wanted to show the angiographic differences between a conventional microcatheter in the trinav catheter. So I will admit I did a better injection actually with the conventional microcatheter because I'm very judicious during mapping, looking for funny vessels and collateralization, et cetera. So there's ex excellent opacification of both the inferior and superior branches uh, from the right hepatic artery here, just distal to the catheter tip. You can obviously make out tumor blush as well. Interestingly, I typically do a much less robust injection prior to Y90 administration. In this case was no uh, exception to that rule. It's because I'm just confirming catheter position to demonstrate where I'm going to treat. Despite that practice of doing less robust injection, I would argue that the trinav catheter angiogram has a more robust and more evident tumor blush. And furthermore, there's almost a shunting of flow, decreased flow to that inferior going branch. So these images, I believe, show the value of trinav. So I took several lessons away from this right hepatic artery, segmental Y90. Um, I found that while Trinav actually does track beautifully over the micro wire, in fact, I was able to place it slightly more proximally than some people might initially want to. Um, but by placing it proximally, I in fact avoided any of the distal tortuosity that might have made things much more difficult. And I made sure that the tumor was entirely covered. Furthermore, upon Y90 delivery, I let the catheter alter the hemodynamics of that liver angiosome, and I believe that I did preferentially flood that hepatocellular carcinoma, or all three of those, with Y90. I knew that I would get good perfusion of that tumor. So we are rather lucky at my institution that we have immediate post radioembolization PET MRI imaging. Uh, with this imaging, I'm able to both distinctly characterize tumor morphology and size, but also the distribution of Y90 throughout the liver. With this imaging modality, I can confidently predict treatment response even before the patient leaves the hospital. So in this case, the PET MRI showed extremely focused radiation throughout those cluster tumors on the right hepatic lobe, which was exactly the goal to begin with. Unfortunately for my patient, there is a segment four lesion that you can see here that actually has grown rather rapidly than if you remember the prior liver MRI. So that, that to me demonstrates particularly bad tumor biology. And so I was pretty nervous about his future at this point. 
So I ended up treating this patient in three serial treatments. I treated segment four separately, and I'm not showing that here for the sake of time. After treating segment four with a traditional microcatheter, I brought the patient back for treatment of his left hepatic lobe, which I will show now. Um, before I get to that treatment, I wanted to show again here, this is a celiac angiogram from the same patient that shows how short his left hepatic artery takeoff actually is prior to branching. Due to his tumor distribution, however, I knew that I would have to deliver a, a nice dose into the left hepatic artery. So turning attention to this artery, here's the pretreatment angiogram. And while it was really uh, kind of challenging to see the angiographic signature of HCC here, I was confident from both comb beam CT and MRI that these are the lesions that I was treating. But in this instance, I desired for treatment, not only the anti-reflux and preferential tumor flow quality of China, but also the secondary benefits of China in securing my catheter position. Um, and this was actually top of mind for me because during several of my injections while I was mapping, a conventional microcatheter, in fact, did pop out of that vessel. And so the Trinav, in contrast, uh, once I placed it good in, good, in, in a good location, remained stably positioned for the administration. So once I was satisfied with catheter positioning, I performed radioembolization from this location. We performed the PET MRI again immediately after radioembolization. Now it's showing preferential Y90 throughout the left hepatic lobe, as well as the lateral portion of that segment four tumor that I had partially treated um, a, a couple of weeks prior to this administration. Importantly, given this low bar dose, there's pretty significant relative paucity of activity within uh, the normal background liver parenchyma. So we typically obtain a three-month follow-up MRI, and I did the same for this patient. I really did hold my breath quite a bit before this uh, study was done. I was very nervous given how challenging it was to treat his disease and how I knew that his disease had bad tumor biology. Uh, but here is the three-month follow-up. Uh, this is an EOVIS liver MRI. The arterial phase subtraction images here show absolutely no areas of enhancement that would correlate with his known prior HCCs or any new ones either. His portal venous phase imaging shown below uh, show areas of hypo-intensity within the treatment zones. And this is not washed out because nothing was enhanced. It's simply non-viable tumor. So in short, this was a pretty amazing result. I wanted to finish up here by showing a few select images from his pre and post scan here. Um, these do highlight really the dramatic response in both the right and the left hepatic lobes here. Again, a great result. I saw my patient in clinic recently at six months, which is a little bit of a delayed visit, uh, uh, but this was due to COVID-19. He appeared well, well when he came to clinic. His laboratory studies were updated at that same time. Really have a pretty similar treatment for a similar profile to his pretreatment labs. So this is my last slide. I'd like to conclude with this, uh, which is that the TriNAP catheter was pretty instrumental in the treatment of my patient. It proved very useful in the delivery of Y90 predictively and consistently to multicentric disease. Um, and this was a unique combination here, which allowed me to do a more proximal delivery here, at least in one of the arteries, right? Avoiding the downfall of super selective therapy, which can sometimes leave behind small collaterals, allowed me to alter the hemodynamics of liver angiosomes and preferentially amplified tumor perfusion. And in my patient with prior local regional therapy, the reduction in Y90 exposure to background liver parenchyma allowed me to treat large territories without precipitating REILV. And I think as a bonus, the catheter itself never caused spasm, took torturous anatomy rather easily, and even allowed me to secure a catheter position within a very short artery. So I thank you very much for your attention and I hope you may all try, uh, try the TriNav catheter soon.